Hurricanes come to the ballpark. With all the smoke, there is plenty of fire and pain. And there is speed, so sudden, so rape-like. In the heart of Pennsylvania, there lives a lion, a Nittany lion of considerable fame. Solid, steady, balanced, Penn State. Throw some, run some. But always defend with vigor. Number two, number seven, Miami and Penn State. ABC Sports College Football presents a CFA matchup. The Miami Hurricanes and the Nittany Lions of Penn State. And we're lucky today to bring you the colors off Mother Nature's palette. Flavoring the slopes of Mount Nittany as the first frost and autumn comes into view. And welcome back to Beaver Stadium here on ABC Sports. I'm Keith Jackson. This ball game has been sold out since midsummer, and why not? It's one of the feature games of the entire season. Following us today, there will be regional action. This is the lineup. Check your local listings, and you might also want to check your local cable operator to see which games are available on the pay-per-view. The Miami Hurricanes have been the source of so many struggle, struggles over the last uh, decade. They've had struggles. They've had uh, excitement. They've had great success. Well, the last couple of um, seasons, we're prone to call them wide right university, and here's why. Because if three field goals had not gone wide right, the Hurricanes would not have a 22-game win streak. At the end of 91, a Florida State field goal wide right. Miami by a point. Went on to share a national championship. Third game this season. An Arizona field goal. Uh-huh. Wide right. Miami by a point. And then last Saturday, a Florida State field goal. Yep. Same place. Miami by three. So today, what happened? Who knows? That's why we're going to play the game. The series has been a relatively short one. Last game, however, down south was a close one. We'll be back to Beaver Stadium after our regular feature on what's new in the world of sports, science, and technology, and the word from our ABC station. Football weather in the middle of Pennsylvania, 65 degrees. Humidity has been halved, and it's a stark contrast to what we had last week down in Miami when the Hurricanes struggled with Florida State. Bob Gracie, it's my opinion that if the Miami Hurricanes can go through Andrew and all that trouble, win against Florida State like they did last week, and then come up here and win a ball game, we ought to just bronze them right now and put them on the shelf. <laughs> well, the question for me is, can this team, Miami, continue to win without a running game? They have been outstanding uh, with their defense. They have been winning with their passing game and Toretta. In fact, they are seventh in the nation in passing offense, but they are 106th out of 107 teams in the rushing department. Now, we'll see a, a new face in the running uh, back position. Danielle Ferguson, a true freshman, uh, brings speed and quickness to that position. He is the fourth stringer, but he'll be playing some today. For Penn State, for Joe Paterno, same stuff. Conservative ball control. Last year, they had the ball 16 more minutes than Miami did. They want to do that again. It's a veteran ball club. If there's a, a young uh, question mark and a youth, it's John Sack of the quarterback. He's just a sophomore, his fifth start, but this will be his biggest start of his life. If there's an edge, the special teams. Penn State has an outstanding kicker. Miami's kickers had some problems, and the return people for Penn State have been outstanding. Looking at the uh, win streak, Miami now at 22. Penn State is 111. Incidentally, the last team to beat Penn State was Miami. It ought to be a dandy. In the mid-90s here today, we check in with Jack Aroot. Keith, all the talk you had in the pregame about being wide right, well, yesterday the Miami Hurricanes were wide left. You see, when they went to land at their scheduled airport, Williamsport, they were forced south by inclement weather and had to endure a three-hour ride 
by bus up here to walk through. Now, many people thought that maybe that would affect them, that they'd be a little downtrodden here, but that's not the same thing that's happened. You see this student section here? Well, they played a lot of rap music and a lot of rock and roll in the pregame, and that Miami Hurricane team, they were rocking and rolling. They said they felt just like they were back in the Orange Bowl. Playing the same music. <laughs> That's for sure. Kevin Williams, who is Gimpy, out on the field now, going to be a returner as Joe Paterno paces the sidelines. He won't stop all day. Dennis Erickson, of course, the boss of the Miami Hurricanes. Williams is number five. He's playing on a sore ankle. Number 35 is Darrell Spencer. And kicking off for Penn State will be Craig Fayak. He is from Bell Vernon, down the road from here. It is a bright, sunny day. It rained yesterday. The field was covered. They play on Mother Earth. Absolutely glorious setting for college football. The stadium crowd around 95,000. We are in happy trouble. It's fun to come back. It's been a while since we've been here. Bayak's kick is high. Hangs up and takes the net. The 10 by Kevin Williams. Got a crease and turns it around the corner to the 30, up close to the 35-yard line. It was Williams who burned uh, Penn State with a big play a year ago. Gino Toretta comes out to start the offensive proceedings for Miami. Only three interceptions in 176 pass attempts. That's noteworthy. Williams, we told you, was gimpy. Has a sore leg, sore ankle, and uh, the two wideouts, Copeland and Thomas, they're fine. Larry Jones starts. Coleman Bell is sort of a tight end. He's about as quick a tight end as you've ever seen. It is not Jones. It is Bennett. A little dinged up in there, but Bennett is the starter, not Jones. And Bennett has the ball on the first carry. Moves it out to the 40-yard line from the 33. That'll be a pickup of close to seven and second down coming up. The diehard uh, starting lineup for Miami's offensive unit features Etheridge, Barber, Green, Vickers, Crystal Ball up front. Now, these are the big people that have got to give Gino Toretta some time today because he will need some time today against Penn State. Teams undefeated, Miami number two, Penn State number seven. Miami opens running the ball. This is something they have not done well this season, and they have just picked up a first down on two running plays. The defensive unit for Penn State, Ayoka Jackson, Ben Stewart, Ben Foddy, Lou, and uh, Rich McKenzie, a very good front four for Penn State. The linebackers, the bell cow there is Reggie Gibbons. He goes all over the field. He does everything required. He's a really good player. Derek Bonna is the man who got burned a year ago and vows it ain't going to happen again. And on first down, Toretta's first pass of the day he is tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it is incomplete. He had Kevin Williams slanting across the middle, and he had Williams where he wanted him. He had linebacker coverage on him, Reggie Gibbons, and Reggie, as talented as he is, would have trouble handling Kevin Williams. Miami went to a four-wide receiver, one-back offense, no tight end, and motioned the back out of the backfield. They want to get those linebackers, Gibbons, on some of their wide receivers. They like that. It was open, just got the ball knocked down. Well, credit the big guys up front with a good play. Toretta back hands the ball to Bennett again. And uh, there isn't anything there this time as the defensive flow moves off to the left side and uh, stopped it. Good play there by Phil Yaboa Cody for Penn State. The Lions at home wearing the dark shirts on the road. You know, they really go vanilla with plain white and wear the black shoes. but they're not. Nobody catches it. All right, it's third down and seven now for Miami. Loretta with a lot of time. Throws to Bennett, and it is hit by Gibbons. Well short of the first down. And so the Penn State Nittany Lions defensive unit stops Miami just across midfield at their own 49, and the Canes will have to punt. Paul Snyder is the punter, and uh, he had a very good week last week against uh, Florida State, averaging over 41 yards. He's just under 41 on the season. 
So he'll try to pop it up in the air, and this fellow standing under it is exciting. O.J. McDuffie. Spinner. He may get good action on it. Oh, he bounces on into the end zone. So instead of being able to spin it, bounce it sideways and kill it deep, he hits it 49 yards into the end zone, and Penn State will start first down at their own 20, having stopped Miami in its first possession. At about 5.30 this morning, uh, at dawn, they were entertaining here and there and everywhere, and then they had a uh, march all the way from the music center over here, which is about a mile. They'll be worn out when the day's over. Penn State comes up on the ball now with John Sutton starting at quarterback. He is a sophomore in competition. He's out of Delman, New Jersey, the younger brother of Tony, who's quarterback here in his first play of the pass. And the pass is completed to Floyd Brinkman who is uh, playing tight in but had uh, played previously wide receiver he's a big strong guy at 6 3 220 and uh, he's a very dangerous guy you see that uh, this young man is gaining uh, confidence every week against Rutgers last week only two other quarterbacks in history at Penn State have had bigger day and OJ McDuffie as we told you is a particularly effective fellow who does everything and Richie Anderson's having a pretty good year at tailback. He's healthy. That's the important thing. It is second down and two. Second back. Hands it off on the way back. And a little bit of a delay to Anderson. And he runs to the 39-yard line on the home folks like it. Up front, the offensive the front. Diehard starting unit for Penn State. Huntington, Jerak, Sandusky, Malinowski, and Rucci. Rucci's first start missed all of last year with a bad leg. Joe Paterno says this offensive front is better than the one he had a year ago. Five-man line that time, Keith, for the Hurricanes. They do that to stop the running game. Didn't stop it very well that time. So on first down from the 39, Saka again goes to the air. Throws it in. Caught on the sideline. And the catch is good to Justin Williams, a sophomore out of Uniondale, New York. And that ball could not have been thrown any better. Oh, is that a great throw? Into the short side of the field. That's the outside receiver, Duck Duffy, tries to hold the corner. Look at this throw. Not only did he have the corner and the safety to throw it away from, but also throw it inside the boundary. Great catch. Now Williams is out, and Tyson Thomas checks in. Tyson is playing very tenderly, hoping to play himself back into shape. He's been dinged up a lot. Number one, in motion, at a fire. Back to back. Thomas in the middle of the traffic. He's right open, but he runs out of time as the Miami Hurricane defensive people spin and swarm in there with Kevin Patrick, number 86, who was brilliant last week. Brian and Patrick played the best game. I don't know if I've ever seen two defensive ends play a better game. Riley and Caesar in the middle, and these three people, uh, the three linebackers, must have a good, solid day-to-day -to, -day to handle Penn State's running game. And Ryan McNeil, of course, continues to lead the other young people in the secondary for the game. The ball is at the Miami 45-yard line. Now we're at second down and 13. Give it to Brian McNeil, O'Neill, the uh, fullback. And Brian O'Neill out of Cincinnati, Ohio, thunders over the right side, had a huge hole, and picks up a first down inside the 30. There are huge gaping holes in that defensive front for the Hurricanes. Watch the blocking. As you mentioned, Paterno likes this offensive line. Breaks a tackle there by number 29, Greer. And O'Neill, who is the fullback, the blocking back, doesn't get a lot of the notoriety. Has just uh, done very well on his first carry. So, the Canes now being shoved back against the wall with the Lions. It's first down Penn State at the Miami 29. And uh, man on the left side of the center came off the ball a little too quickly, Mike Malinowski. He's a senior out of Shenandoah, Pennsylvania. Those are games that are going to follow us today. The referee today is uh, John Soffey, the umpire Carl Crowley. Headlinesman Lee Reuter, 
The line judge, Nick Trainer, Arnold Lohr, the field judge, Mike Popkin, the side judge, and James Anderson is the back judge. Keith, the first drive, in fact, the first 25 plays for Penn State are scripted. They go over them on Friday, and they go over them on Thursday, so the offense knows exactly which plays they're going to run. I think that's good. It gives the confidence to those players, the linemen, the backs, that they know which plays they're going to be running first so they can check their assignments, and it's proving out here so far. So now first down and 15. Blitz. Ball comes back and the pass. Thomas didn't look. He decided instead of going deep to McDuffie on a fly down the sidelines to go underneath to Thomas and Thomas didn't look. Well, the Hurricanes that time, Keith, they went to a five-man line the previous play, but when they couldn't stop the run with that, Sonny Lubick, the defensive coordinator, said, well, we'll blitz you. And uh, he had plenty of time to throw. That was not the problem. Just didn't hook up with his receiver. No, it's second down and 15. It is 15, remember, because of the five-yard penalty against Penn State. Ross again goes in motion. Let's it go, and uh, that's into the crowd. Same play that he hit earlier in this drive. And uh, that time it was uh, well covered. It was well covered the last time, and he just threw it away. Drayton was the man under it, and you're looking at third down and 15 now. The other two quarterbacks, in case you're curious, who have had 300-plus games, other than uh, the young man, second, Todd Blackledge and Chuck Cusino. That's a couple of names that rank pretty high in Penn State football lore. Third down. At 19 to go in the first quarter of play, two undefeated teams, numbers two and seven. They run that little delay with the fullback Brian O'Neill again. This time the games handle it better. They stop him at the 31-yard line, and it will be fourth down. Kind of a conservative call. Uh, I think anybody would agree with that. The problem with the with the, with the quarterback John Saka. Slow starter. It started all or four games previous to this very slowly, and they probably didn't want to get him in a situation where he threw a bad pass. So they put a little heat on Craig Fayak then as he comes in with a kick of 48 yards and field goal try. This is not a bad area, Keith, to try a gimmick if you've got a trick off of it. You're deep in their territory. His long is uh, 44 yards. It's blocked. Haynes blocked it. And the Lions cover it. It'll go down around midfield. It was Dexter Siegler, I believe, on the 34. So Miami sends uh, the quick man, a defensive back off the corner. He comes flying in. He blocks the field goal try. And uh, Penn State will take over, or rather, Miami will take over just short of midfield at their own 49-yard line. A look here are the two men over here one of them is going to come to the inside Siegler on the outside is just going to come around number 29 and make the block it should not happen Fayak was a little bit slow in getting the ball off Penn State had overshifted to the wide side that should not happen let's see if they try to hit a big one here a little quick pop down the middle ball batted up in the air and it's incomplete slapped up in the air intended for Lamar Thomas on a quick pop as he chose to let the ball go rather than going back and try to throw something big deep. So it's an incomplete and it's second down and 10. The ball is just short of the 49 yard line. Dennis Erickson was not a happy camper when he arrived in town uh, with his entourage uh, last night. They were supposed to land in Williamsport, wound up in Harrisburg. The weather was kind of tacky. And, uh, it became quite an arduous uh, day of travel for them. Jackson takes him down. Ayoka is a senior from Forestville, Maryland. 68 is Etheridge. Carlos Etheridge, the, the right tackle, blocking on Jackson. Etheridge is the former tight end who was, uh, because of need, was shifted out to tackle. He weighs only 238 pounds. He has been playing well as far as pass protection, but uh, you just can't match up when you give away that many pounds to a defensive lineman. And it has all 20 of Miami's yards so far in the game. And Coretta is the one who is the slow starter. Jackson's after him, and Coretta completes the pass. That will be for a first down to Jonathan Harris. The little Jonathan Harris, 5'9", 
165 pound sophomore out of Houston Texas goes up in the middle mind you and makes the catch and it, it takes a certain degree of courage folks to go down the middle when you're five nine well he, he, he is going to play a lot today probably for Kevin Williams who has an ankle he plays the same position they're playing man coverage in the secondary. Toretta's had receivers open. He just had a couple balls batted at the line of scrimmage. Ball is off the Penn State, 41. First down, Miami. No score in the ball game. And this is Bennett finding daylight and spinning for just about another first down. And here is John Thunder. How did John? He's trying to bounce back from their loss to Miami last week, facing North Carolina. This is Corey Sawyer fielding the punt. Watch the nice blocking he picks up down the sidelines and then from there it's off to the races 74 yards they're up 13 to nothing about six minutes in that's yuki that kick return has become the big play for florida state Paul sawyer he's going to break one or he's going to make a big mistake in the end zone <laughs> second down Quite a first down. They were about a half a yard short. Bennett puts the uh, stamp on it with that run down to the 26. And so Miami will move the chains again as they now mount a threat. Well, the big thing here, Keith, is Miami picking up first downs on the ground. They're not doing anything differently than they've done in the past. Just straight blocking by the offensive line, but they're just finding the hole. Miami is a great goal team. Obviously, uh, by that stat right there, they play well at home also. Quarter. He averages 28 yards per game on the season, but today he's already got 36 to 37 yards. At the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player from each team. And for the 22nd year, through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each of the universities. 68 is Carlo Vestry. Just go back and take a look at him. A double team block. Green is 51. 47 is right. He has to run around the pile to make the play. Miami running well early. Second down and five. For a couple. Slicing in over the right side, stepping in behind Green and Vickers. Now this is a totally different look we're seeing right now. Like the hurricane. I think what's happening, Keith, is Penn State. They they were getting ready to play Miami, so they'll say we gotta stop their, their pass. That's the thing they can do. They're second last in the nation running the ball, so they're concentrating on pass. Miami's concentrating on getting that running game going, and so far they've got the edge. They've had uh, 12 plays, they've run eight. It's just back, here's another run with Bennett getting the pressure from the back, but he runs away from the pressure and escapes that backside pressure. It was Rich McKenzie who was trying to shirt tail him, and he couldn't get it. To look at the Hurricanes this year inside the 20. They've had it inside 18 times. They've scored 13. 11 of those 13 were touchdowns. And after that run, they own the ball at the Penn State 10-yard line, first and goal. running the football. And credit the offensive line. They've been getting all the abuse. A young offensive line, two men pull. That's Cristobal. And also 68 with Etheridge coming across. And Bennett didn't have anybody to juke. He was in the hole and he said, hey, this has not been the way it's been most of the year. The extra point try by Pruitt. It's good. 5.39 to go in the first quarter. The Miami Hurricanes stick at the end zone as Bennett gains 59 yards on 10 carries, a 10-yard touchdown run. At BASF, we don't make the meal, we make it healthier. We don't make the lotion, we make it smoother. We don't make the dress, we make it brighter. We don't make the carpet, we make it tougher. At PASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. 
BASF. Terrorists have taken over a nuclear arsenal, and only one man can take it back. Steven Seagal. Here come the good guys. Tommy Lee Jones. Bang, you're dead. Under Siege, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. One oil filter traps 80% more dirt than the leading competitor. Clearly, that's Motorcraft. Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. I go around. I was strong as I could be. I go around. First, J.D. Power & Associates ranked Chevrolet the best full-size pickup in initial quality. Now they also report Chevrolet is the best truck line overall in sales satisfaction. Chevrolet, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Here's a little uh, bit of information for you about uh, Dennis Erickson. Now, do you know who the other coach was? Barry Switzer, Oklahoma. 1974 and 75. That is, that's quite a record. And he really just picked up where uh, Jimmy Johnson led off. Johnson picked up where Schnellenberger led off. They've won four championships in nine years, Keith, but they've had won them with three different coaches and two different athletic directors. J.T. Morris and O.J. McDuffie are the deep people. That is a high hanger. It's finally taken by the Jay's a flyer. Yep, he wants the name of the juice. No question about it. He flushes out to about the 37 yard line. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown right here. These two men. This is Barber. He's going to come and pull. And Etheridge is going to come. The back is going to step to his left and then follow the two left offensive linemen. The one man runs upfield. That's Bonner, the defensive back. And look at the huge hole from the end zone. And Bennett says, hey, I like I can I can take some of this. So Penn State starts out now in this position with very good field position. The ball is just beyond the 37. Five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, and the Hurricanes leading now seven to nothing. Stay with the ground game and Anderson carries. Richie is a 210 pounder out of Sandy Spring, Maryland. And spinning around, he finds a couple of yards before Darren Smith brings him down. So I would imagine in, uh, up in the coaching booths and on both sides of the field right now, there, there's a bit of humming and a horn about how to change this old game plan that we came with. You know, uh, we who know what's going on are a little bit surprised, and the uh, coaches, the staff on both sides are also surprised with that first drive of Miami. Second down, nine, back goes Saka. Good uh, protection. Crosses the line of scrimmage and dives ahead, close to a first down. So the Miami pressure people got caught up in the middle of things there, and the Lions offensive front was able to keep them hemmed in, and Saka finally wound up running the ball. There's a look at Michael Barrell. Middle linebacker leads the team in tackles. This is his 29th start of his career. And yes, the name is spelled correctly. <laughs> Michael. 15 tackles last week against Florida State. Got to be sore, but he's bouncing around. Doesn't look. Here goes Anderson again. Flashing runner. This time there's just nothing there. It didn't look like it. He may have squeezed the first down out of the effort. And they'll take time to have a look and stop the clock at 4:03. In talking to Joe yesterday. things that the Hurricanes will try to do to stop the running game is blitz some of their linebackers. There's an outstanding look at Barrow not making the tackle but being so deep in the offensive backfield that he disrupts the blocking and allows one of the other guys to get there. Well, that's exactly what Dennis uh, Erickson said he was going to do. That they have a defensive package where they can blitz them uh, try to blitz them out of the run. 
because they'd be a lot happier with Penn State throwing well, than they would uh, with Penn State running. Well, the thing you want to do is take take the running game away from Paternal and force the inexperienced John Saka to beat you through the air. Now, his brother last year, Tony Saka, did an outstanding job in the Orange Bowl playing, running around, making plays. And John is going to have to do that today, and that's what the Hurricanes want him to do. Well, they get the first down by a half a ball, and Saka turns and gives the ball to Brian O'Neill. And O'Neill, uh, boy, he's a tough fella. He picks up nine yards. He carried two Hurricanes with him. So it'll be second and one, and here is John in New York. Keith, Syracuse has their offense rolling in a high gear in the first quarter against Rutgers. This is Marvin Graves, the Cadre Ishmael, and it's 69 yards. But watch how he gets turned around, still keeps his footing, takes it in for the touchdown. They're up 17-0. Meanwhile, Florida State is up just 13-7 now. Back to you, Keith. Cadre Ishmael's a heck of a football player. Second down and one. This is Richie Anderson. Gets a pretty good play out of it and uh, moves the ball down to about the 36 yard line. Kind of an interesting comment yesterday, uh, too, in, uh, in what Joe Paterno had to say about his running game, which we played at the very outset of the telecast today. In case you didn't hear it, he, he said simply, is put your head in the crack and get what you can get. Four or five yards, don't be juking around because they're going to run you down. And you're not going to see Penn State running wide too often either. It's going to be power football inside the tackles, inside the ends, and right at them. Be happy with a five yard pickup. Nothing there this time. At 2.40 to go in the first quarter. Monday night from the nation's capital, John Elway, who has. <laughs> <laughs> put on some shows in the last five minutes of uh -huh. games, hasn't he? Uh-huh. He's a dandy. They go into RFK Stadium against the Washington Redskins. The Broncos do, and of course, uh, Mark Rippon's having his troubles uh, with the old intercept. Well, the Redskins need to win. And the Redskins are up to get it. They're, they're looking for that rock and hard place if they don't uh, win this ballgame. Nine o'clock Eastern time on ABC's Monday Night Football. Back goes Saka. His pass is through. the tight end. Darren Smith, the linebacker, was right there, had him covered as well as you could cover him, but the pass was on the numbers, and Drayton's a big target. From behind the defense, uh, receiver's going to come from the right side of your screen. There's Darren Smith, 45, a linebacker, out covering a tight end who was flanked real wide. Now, Drayton is a tight end, but he's also played a lot of wide receiver. You see, he's not real big, 6'1 and 230. the ball in the Drayton. He stretches out for his mark. He won't get that much. They're going to mark him short the first down. Casey Greer, the man had a hold of him. But give him credit. He reached for it. What a great effort by Great. He comes from Steelton, which is down by Harrisburg. The suburbs of Harrisburg. I don't know if they like to be known as a suburb, but it's in that vicinity. It's fourth down, and the Lions are going. Fourth and two. Short two. Let's roll it out. Let's coming. Passes away. Passes caught by Drayton down the middle of the field. And it's first down at the 20. That certainly is not what Miami expected. Fourth and two, Paterno goes for it on fourth down. Great pass. On, yeah, well, get your, get your quarterback outside the pocket. Give him a little more time. He doesn't start these games off real uh, confidently, but there is a great throw. Rolling to his left, Drayton, the tight end, the second best receiver on this ball club, Keith. Penn State wants to answer with some points here after Miami's touchdown because ball given to Richie Anderson and Number two grabs him as he comes to the line of scrimmage. Marley, Rowan Marley, redshirt freshman, and helps wrestle him down after a yard. But that uh, that touchdown and the success with the running game from Miami had to go through the ranks like a bolt of lightning. <laughs> they have to have extreme confidence coming from it, and Penn State needs to enter it because they trail seven to nothing. Two 
Duke down in the end of the big bowl here at State College, University Park, Pennsylvania. Their football team has the ball, second down and nine at the Miami 19 yard line. Miami leads on the scoreboard seven to nothing. John second rolls it out. Now gets a little heat. Folks are coming. And uh, that is a basic preachment by the Penn State coaching staff all week. Don't start diddling around because there's going to be somebody coming. Second sack. Second sack, but uh, Paternal's quarterbacks have not thrown an interception in a long time. In fact, they've not thrown an interception this year. Three quarterbacks have played for Joe, and 131 attempts coming into the game, no interceptions. And it even goes further if you go back into last year, 220 to this point. Back of back has time, passes away, and it's right on target for Drayton. So Drayton is the big target today for John Saka. He's got the size at 6'3 and 220. He goes out of bounds just short of the 10-yard line. And it may be just short of the first down. It'll be close, and they'll want to bring the change in to check it. Because he caught the ball right on the sidelines. He got one step before he went out of bounds. And so for the second time, uh, Penn State's got to sweat out a measurement. Well, that was just a great throw by the young Saka, Keith. If he did, if he does get off the slow starts, he's warming up pretty quickly. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> I don't see anything slow about him at all. <laughs> by the nose of the ball. Here's a look at the first quarter stats. Take a look at this, uh, the passing yardage. Miami with only 10. Penn State with 45 in the first. The total plays, 18 to 14 in favor of Penn State, and the time of possession also in favor of Penn State, and that's the way Penn State wants to play this game. First down, just short, just inches short of the 10 yard. Anderson hit, gets away, and will pick up a couple of yards, and here's the penalty flag. Penalty flag was thrown back around the 16, 17 yard line. Could be a hold. Holding. Offense. So Penn State makes a mistake. And they'll turn around and go the other way. Could be a 17 yard penalty. Because the flag was thrown at the 17. The ball was down by the 10. Take a look from the left side of your screen. I think it's number 66, Huntington. First down. On 86. I really couldn't see any hold. Couldn't see it there, but the officials say that that's, uh, that's the man that was called for the holding, number 66. And it is a 17-yard penalty because the foul occurred at the 17. They moved it back 10, and now Penn State has the football back at their own 27-yard line. On first down at 27, Saka lets it go. And the pass is caught by McDuffie. A great catch by McDuffie. He was hammered just as the ball arrived. But again, the passing of Saka, the accuracy is remarkable. The Hurricanes, Hurricanes are playing a two-deep zone. What they're trying to do is get this receiver down inside and break him back to the outside. Now watch McDuffie as he comes to the inside, straighten up on the second guy, and then break out. The safety gets there, but just a tad late. The ball is there, and the catch is made. Terrace Harris hit him hard, but... He'd put it away. This is Anderson. Anderson is inside the five to the three-yard line. It'll be third down and three at the three for Penn State. This is how Penn State has done inside the 20-yard line. Ten times they've been inside. They've scored eight, and five of the eight were touchdowns. Miami inside is pretty good. Saka now is seven out of nine for 72 yards. 
And we have 12.50 to go in the first half. Seven to nothing, Miami. And Penn State trying now to get on the board. They have had a field goal try block. Back up, delay, hand, Archer to the one. Archie, Mike Archie, sophomore out of Sharon, Pennsylvania. He's one of the another one of those pickup trucks that's playing running backs in college football. He's 5'8", 206 pounds. <laughs> Well, they have a load of good running backs at Penn State. The three backups are redshirt freshmen, an outstanding recruiting year as Fayak comes on to attempt a field goal. Interesting call, Keith, on the two-yard line, trying to score with a reverse. I mean, that tells me I don't have anything better to score with. I got a trick. Up. I'd rather have yep. something confident, yep. not a trick, to score my touchdown with. So Fayak is in. They will settle for three. He missed it as Paul White, who blocked one against Florida State last week, came off the same corner that Siegler did earlier in this ball game. And Fayak misses, and Penn State is turned away, and they are deeply disappointed, obviously. Go back, he missed the field goal a little bit earlier. Here's Smith, he comes on the inside. Now watch Fayak, number five. When he sees Smith come to the inside, he knows he got one block. He just kind of pulls it away from the pressure, and he pulled it left. He should never miss a short field goal like that. Larry Jones is in now, running back for Miami, as Darren Smith got up and walked off the field. Seems to be all right. And uh, sack. Blowing through the middle is Lou Benfotti, number 55, a senior from Green Pond, New Jersey. And one of the best football players on the field wearing blue today. Blue Ben Putty. Well, he just blew right up the pipe. It, was, it had to be a missed assignment up front or else the back was slow getting to him. We get word that Darren Smith just got a, uh, a knee to the thigh. He should be able to return. Ball is marked all the way back at the 13-yard line to make it second down and 17 now for Miami after Penn State missed the field goal. Kevin Williams in the ball game. Four ankle and all. Pressure coming. Pass it away. And uh, they run together in the secondary. Coleman Bell, the intended receiver, and uh, no flag. Mayoka Jackson, number 97, was putting the heat on uh, Tony uh, uh, Toretta, Gino Toretta. Gino, so far, however, has uh, kept the clean jersey. Or clean britches, whichever it is he gets. Uh, on third down and 17. Penalty flag. Pass under pressure is short of the mark. Lamar Thomas is out there, but it was uh, line judge that threw the flag. Legal formation on the offense. The tackle is too far back into the backfield. Only six men on the line. That'll happen a lot in, in the one-back offense because you got so many wideouts sometimes they don't check, they forget to check. But the other thing is when those uh, offensive linemen uh, are going against a tough defensive uh, pass rusher, they want to get a little bit uh, back into their stance already. He just all lined up off the line of scrimmage. Obviously, Penn State would decline it, and they did. O.J. McDuffie going back down to Paul Snyder's punt. On fourth down and 17, and Penn State ought to come out of this with pretty good field position. The first punt today by Snyder was 49 yards. Kick is away, and that's a low liner. McDuffie's got some room from his own 42. Penalty black all over the place. Oh, I'm sure you must have an illegal block or a flip or something over there in the middle of the field. It was a 48-yard punt, but it was a low driving kick, which gave McDuffie all that room, and O.J. got a 12-yard return. I would guess this to be a blocking foul of yeah, some kind. Hit, hit him in the back. It was a, it was a illegal block above the waist. It was not a clip below the waist, but it was certainly above the waist. John Sophie will define it for us. Illegal push in the back against the receiving team. 10 yard penalty. All right, now let's recap for a moment in case you, well, see this first. It's right there, Keith. You. There's the there's the block in the back. Now let me tell you about what's happened in this ball game up to this point. Penn State's first possession, they had nine plays. 
they had a field goal block. Then they got it back. They had 16 plays, and they missed the field goal again. So they've got to be frustrated right now. Call it different things around here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> From the 40-yard line, on their side of the field, Saka lets him go, and he's got Tyson Thomas, and Thomas loses his footing trying to make a turn up field, but he's got a first down, an 11-yard pickup. And so Saka continues to deliver a striking performance here in the first half. Tyson Thomas, 5'8", out of York, Pennsylvania. Real speedster, but he's playing tender. He's been hurt. He missed last year with a knee injury, Keith, and missed last week's game, but they need his speed in there. From the Miami 48, they'll run it to Brian O'Neill, the fullback. He's a 227-pounder out of Cincinnati, and he's the kind of a back you almost always find in the Penn State backfield. Mm -hmm. Pick up of about three yards on the play. Syracuse jumping all over Rutgers. Well, Rutgers came over here last week and uh, played. Uh, went up to Meadowlands, I guess, and played Penn State. And you always spend a lot of adrenaline, I would think, if you're a Rutgers play at Penn State. Michael Barrow now has six tackles in the ball game for Miami. Pressure coming, dump it off, got a man blocking in front of Anderson. He's going to make a cut to the outside because the blocker had uh, his man in perfect position, but he slips and slides down on the 40, and we go sliding into the York pajamas. Keith, Illinois and Ohio State, Eddie George fumbles this ball and watch the gift. It bounces around right up into the open arms of Jeff Arneson. From there, it's 96 yards to the end zone with no Buckeyes in sight. The touchdown puts the Illini up 7-0 in the first quarter. Keith. I like that rules change, too. I think it was a good one. Yeah, where you can pick up a fumble and yep. advance it. Run with it. Yep. On third down and two, Saka throws a hummer. Intended for Drayton. He had the linebacker stepping in front of him that time. It was Smith, 45. Marley was also in the neighborhood. And it'll be fourth down and two. And so Penn State now is going to have to punt this football. You almost get the feeling as Kevin Williams goes in to field the punt that they're having success in an unexpected area. And as a result, they can't put a ribbon on it, can they? Well, they've moved the ball well, as you mentioned earlier, but no points. Ah, hanger. That might get a kill inside uh, the 10, and it will as Kevin Williams comes across to make the uh, catch. And now some penalty flags, and they may have crowded him. I'm not sure they gave him room to make the catch. He's entitled to two yards. Interference with the opportunity to make the catch. It's a five-yard penalty against the kicker. Invaded the two-yard belt. Take a look at number 48, the right side of your screen. That's Gray. Oh, man, he was trying to run away from it, yep. too. Well, the ball was just chasing him. He didn't know where the ball was, and uh, he knew what he was trying to do, get out of the way, and just ball was following him. My goodness, that's a tough call. Yep. These are the games that are coming up next after Miami and Penn State. And again, we say to you, check your local listing for the free game, but you might also want to check with your local cable operator if you'd like to see one of the other games because he might have one or two of them available for you. Larry Jones is in the backfield now as Miami comes up after the penalty. First down. And several 12 yard line. The runner gives the ball to Jones. Jones is the big back. 235-pound sophomore, and he runs it out to about the 17. So that's about five yards. Reggie Gibbons, the tackle. All right, this is the offensive line. After reach number 68. The offensive line of the Hurricanes have been getting abused. He's holding on right there with his left hand. That's McKenzie, number 99. The offensive line of the Hurricanes has uh, taken a lot of heat this year for not being able to run the football. Running it pretty well here today. Second down and five is Miami lead. Seven to nothing off the first quarter. Touchdown. Penn State's had two drives. Field goal block and the field goal miss. And uh, they've still got a zero. And in case you wonder about a uh, special cut on the Penn State turf, well, let's check in with Jack and find out. 
Well, Keith, you know, there was a lot of supposition that maybe the turf this weekend would be high to try and slow down the Miami Hurricanes. Well, that's not the case. In fact, under the tutelage and the direction of Joe Paterno, it's almost the same height as you would find in the Miami Orange Bowl. That makes it for fast receivers, fast running on both sides of the ball. And that's Joe Paterno's way of doing business. Third down and five. Loretta's pass is complete over the middle to Coleman Bell, and Bell's going to have a first down as he gets it out across the 32-yard line. So now the Kings get a little real estate to work with. Loretta has been very quiet, hasn't he? Well, they have. I mean, they have nothing to cheer about. Uh, from behind Toretta, third down, he's hit on two, only two of his first seven. He's throwing it over a couple of linemen. That's a uh, that's one of those deals where the offensive linemen let them in. It's almost a tight end screen. They let their linemen in and they go downfield to block. Great shot of it from the end zone. Here he is Jones. Number 23, Larry Jones from Montgomery. And Jones doesn't get a lot. Todd Burton, junior out of Clark, New Jersey, is there to hit him. Larry Jones, six feet high, 235 pounds. Darrell Spencer was in. He's out now at a flanker position or the tailback position where the guy goes up into the slot. And Kevin Williams comes back now to play that position. On second down and eight. Swing it out to Jones. Jones looking for some help and there's not enough of it there. He will pick up one yard on the play. Derek Bonner from Greensboro, PA. Arkansas with the first quarter uh, field goal to lead Tennessee. You have to be careful in college football. There's a trap waiting behind, uh, you know, a hole behind every run. <laughs> you just don't know where to step sometimes. Tennessee's been rolling high. they got Alabama coming next week. Arkansas going uh -huh. down in the dump. Uh -huh. Got to be careful of it. Got Alabama coming next week. That's the key. Third down and six. Let's. There's your first down. Went to Daryl Spencer as Toretta took the snap, stood up, hit Spencer on his right between the three and the five, and the Canes will move the change. Well, that's the way to beat the blitz, uh, Keith. If you see the linebackers come, watch both of these linebackers are going to come. Now watch Toretta. He sees the linebacker come. The man sees it also, and he pops the ball right over where the linebackers are coming. You always throw the blitz, the hot receiver, where the blitz is coming from because that's where the void is. Good read by Toretta and the receiver. So it's first down, Miami at their own 44. They lead 7-0, and Toretta checks off. Changes the play and gives it to his running back, Larry Jones, and he gets it over on the Penn State side of the field. On the first down carry, picked up eight yards. Six minutes and ten seconds to go in the first half. Explain that play again now so that everybody understands it. The hot man, uh, the, the quarterback sees the, where the blitz is coming. The receiver becomes the hot man, the man who is assigned to go where the linebackers would have been, right? Normally, one of the linebackers will be covering that receiver. And when he comes, there's a defensive back lined up deep in the secondary that has to come up and cover it. He doesn't want to show the blitz, so he doesn't get up there too close. So you have a little bit of time to get him the ball quickly. And if you don't understand the rest of it, uh, Bob will answer your letter. <laughs> <laughs> Five and a half minutes to go in the first half is Larry Jones now. It was Bennett early on in the first quarter who had the, uh, the big presence in the Miami possession. Uh -huh. That put him in the end zone on a 10-yard run. And now it's Jones rolling up the yardage against the Penn State defense. down from the Lions 43. Loretta throws down the middle again. Caught this time by Jonathan Harris. That's just a great catch by Harris. The throw was ball. The ball was thrown low. Play action holds the linebackers. That's uh, Smith 52. He may have deflected it. That's why the ball was yep. low. I think it did. I think one of the uh, uh, defensive linemen's elbow hit it. Yeah, Smith uh, yep. probably is the one that hit it. And and Harris made a good catch. So it's another first down. They are camped inside the 32. This is Jones again. A big hole over the left side. Down inside the 20. 
pounding away down to the 15 yard line. That's a pickup of uh, about 16 yards, and it's another first down. Let's check out that Miami offensive line, the one that uh, lost three starters from last year. Check out the, the left side. That's Cristobal and uh, Vicker, 78 blocking. Bell just gets a stalemate. Then the two weak side uh, linemen uh, come around. That's uh, Etheridge and Barber. And the Hurricanes are running, uh, you know, much better than I think anybody expected them to run. Well, they had 82 yards per game going into this one on the season. Today, they've already picked up 90. And their first down just short of the 15. This time, it is hello from Mr. Bonfatti and Mr. Smith. Lou Bonfatti and uh, Willie Smith. Had him at the line of scrimmage. 55 has been body just goes around the block and gets there to get a piece of it the bottom of 35 is a corner and he was blitzing so the further you get down toward the goal line Penn State is going to come after you with the blitzes corner blitzes or linebackers you don't even know what I know Bennett pair of fresh legs checks in but he's not the man it's strong to Kevin Williams and Williams coming inside they were looking to set up a wide receiver screen down the middle and uh, Rich McKenzie, who is number 99 and comes from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He's an outside linebacker or defensive end. And he messed up the play, but still they got a chunk of it at seven yards. McKenzie read that well, too, because the lineman just left him alone. And McKenzie said, wait a minute, somebody's supposed to block me on this play. I'm not going to rush. Something's going on. And he probably watched the film during the week. And he got, you know, says, you know, something's up. I'm going, this must be a screen. Five straight completions now for Toretta. Miami threatening for the second time in the ball game. They lead seven to nothing. There's that corner right into the corner. It goes incomplete. And played very well in the corner. Pass intended for Lamar Thomas, who is the great leaper. Number 35 was covered in front of And he just simply wouldn't let him come back to the ball. Well, this is what they wanted. They wanted Thomas, who is 6'3", and a real good jumper against Bonna, number 35. Bonna does a nice job of body checking, keeping him outside with his body and looking back for the ball. And so on fourth and three, here is Pruitt, who has missed three field goals inside the 30-yard line. Miami was short of man. They only had 10 and had a big hole in the middle. But they finally get him on the field, and here's Pruitt for the try. It'll be a 26-yard try, and he made it. And so with 3.39 to go in the first half, Miami leads Penn State 10 to nothing. Miami's drive that resulted in uh, Pruitt's 26-yard field goal to make it 10 to nothing for the Canes. Key there, Keith, is 14 plays. That's what Dennis Erickson talked about, yep. getting some consistency in his offense. The kick, good one. All the way back two yards deep, it's O.J. McDuffie. And the Canes get to him and bring him down at about the 17. O.J. does make you take a little deep breath when he starts running. Tonight on ABC, action and adventure from a new time and place at Covington Cross. Then Robert Urich in Crossroads and the commission trying to deal with guns at school. A night loaded with action here on ABC. Call it the 18 officially. It's right in between the hash marks at 334 to play in the first half. And the Nittany Lions frustrated with their offense. It's been moving the ball around, but it's produced no points. And pretty much a second unit offensive line is in there right now for them. Saka turns and hands the ball to Richie Anderson. And Anderson's out near the 22. You've got Pickett, uh, Harton, Greeley, uh, Rivera, Heller. This is the Penn State schedule. Now, you see who they play. Cincinnati Temple, Eastern Michigan, Maryland, and Rutgers. I submit to you that ain't quite uh, the likes of Miami. No, they're 5-0 they're and oh with those five teams, and as you bring up a good point, uh, Miami is a little bit higher caliber than those five. I think that is part of the reason Penn State is struggling here in the first half. Second down and six. good protection for Saka. Anderson is uh, hunted down at about the 21-yard line and will probably be just a little bit short of his first down. Depends on the spot. 
looks like it'll be well it is well sir. Turned him back a good four or five yards. Yep. As he wanted to come this way, and they sent him the other way. The linebacking four of Miami. Second down. Third down at six. Two ten to play in the first half. Zaka's pass to the sideline. Almost intercepted by Darren Smith. Almost picked off by Miami's number 45. It, it kind of goes back to the old line we heard a long time ago is when you arrive in town and realize their linebackers can not run your wide out, you've got a problem. Darren Smith runs a 4-5, 40-yard dash. All three of the linebackers run under 4-6. The strength of that uh, hurricane defense is their linebackers, and you saw uh, one of the reasons right there. Jamie Grease, the valedictorian from Mifflinburg High School, is in to do the punting for Penn State. Beautiful kick. Really lifted. Ball not loose. Penalty flag down. Hold on because I think you got the same call here you had a little while ago. You got to let the man have a chance to catch the ball. with the opportunity to catch the kick. Five yard foul. From the spot of the foul. The right call. It is. Take a look from behind the uh, kicking team. This is not the uh, pros. You have to let him have a chance to catch the football. And right there, it's a judgment call. There's no question about it. It's not easy to see from that side. Yeah, but it doesn't the rules say two yards? It says two yards. But when you're when you're running downfield, take another look at it. When you're running downfield, you know what is two yards? <laughs> no, who knows? <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to make the call. Yeah. Well, that's a critical call. I think Miami had the ball anyway, had the fumble. Stephen McGuire is in the lineup. This ball is thrown to Horace Copeland, and Horace makes the catch. And as he juked and made his move to turn back upfield, he may have given away a first down. But he'll pick up eight yards on the play, make it second down and two, and the Canes now hurry at a minute and a half to go in the first half. Miami leads 10 to nothing. Ball it down in the middle. Berger. Todd Berger, number 67, the big guy that slapped it away, coming up at halftime on the Prudential Halftime Report. John Saunders with scores and highlights. Look at the number one, number two Miami Penn State National Championship game of 1987. Both teams with three timeouts remaining. 127 to go first half. Third down, three for Miami. McGuire, they give it to McGuire to run it. And nothing to it. Penn State eats him up. It'll be fourth down. Trots on to punt it. He's had two kicks so far, 49 and 48, and timeout on the field. Alias Sebastian the Ibis. He also does the baseball uh, for the Hurricanes. Snyder's punt. Pressure's coming. He gets it out of there. Pretty good kick. Again, didn't get a whole lot of air under it, though. And McDuff has got a little bit of room. But uh, three Canes down there to stop him. He moves it back for a couple of yards to the 14. There, Penn State will have it first down. With only 58 seconds remaining to play in the first half. But they do have three. Let's go, Two times. They spent the last. One. You can see they too can be tough to beat at home. Well, I've seen some great football games on this old field over the years, going back 35 years. Uh huh. Wow. Florida State and Carolina. On first down, Saka sets him up. Two backs in back. Gives it to the deep man. That's uh, Richie Anderson. And uh, Kevin Patrick and company are right 
58, Corwin uh, Princess, and Pat Riley, 43. Well, and the schedule that the Hurricanes have played coming into this ballgame has been a little bit tougher than what Penn State has played. We showed you Penn State's schedule. Uh, Miami has played Florida State last week and won that exciting game. Played Arizona, which everybody thought was a, a bad game for them. They only beat them eight to seven, but then Arizona goes out and beats UCLA. So things kind of shake out at the end. Mark Caesar, we were told, had a very, very sore ankle, but he's played the whole ball game, and uh, they move him just enough to give Brian O'Neill some room. And Brian, uh, who's having a big first half, picks up the first down as he puts that ball out at the 26 yards. Well, it's, just, it's, it's Paternal's type of uh, ball game. No mistakes. You don't want to make a mistake. Conservative calls just before the half, but you are backed up deep in your own territory, and I can't say that the, this is not the right thing to do. He's got a young quarterback, and you don't want to make it any worse than 10 to nothing at halftime. And we have reached the halftime with Miami leading 10 to nothing. Miami leads uh, number seven Penn State 10 to nothing at Beaver Stadium before a new Beaver Stadium record crowd. 96,704. The old record, 96,672, set a year ago with Notre Dame. We're ready to go with the second half of play. The Miami Hurricanes will kick off to Penn State. The deep people for Penn State are O.J. McDuffie, 24, J.T. Morris, 34, and Dane Pruitt will kick it off for Miami. 10 to nothing, the Hurricanes lead. Penn State had a touchdown uh, field goal blocked and uh, a field goal missed in the first half. No touchdown. McDuffie almost lost control of that ball at the goal line and then turns in a very fine putt. Uh, a bouncing kind of return out to about the 25-yard line. The scoring summary in that first half of play. First quarter, Miami scored as their running game suddenly showed up. Donnell Bennett sticking it in the end zone from 10 yards out. That has to be the single biggest surprise of the ball game so far is the way that Miami has been able to run the ball against Penn State. The other points in the first half came as a result of a 26-yard field goal by Dane Pruitt. And as I told you, uh, Penn State had one blocked and then missed one. So it's first down for the Lions as they mark the ball after the 27, give it back to Rich Anderson, and he gets a good block and gets loose on the sideline. Miami got themselves in a position where they had only one man defending that area, and once Anderson got past the line of scrimmage, he had to move. Is uh, back that's not going to give up. He is 6'2 and 210 pounds, and you're going to have to tackle him. Makes a nice move there. Greer misses the tackle, and he was alone for the Hurricanes last year. And Richie Anderson gets the Lions off to a good start here in the second half. Yeah, he's got the motor running now as they have first down at the Penn State 48. And go back to Brian O'Neill, the fullback, who had a pretty good uh, first half himself. As you look at the first half stats. Well, the first half, the total yards, Penn State was there with the total yards, and they also had the time of possession. They also they liked that. They also had more yards passing uh, than Miami, but Miami made true on their two opportunities to score, and uh, Penn State, uh, as you mentioned, missed two field goals, missed one, and had one block. Ball is at the Miami 48, where it is second down and six. Give it back to Anderson, and again, the coverage on that side is very ordinary for Miami. Number 29, Casey Greer's having a terrible day. Every time we see him out in the open field trying to make a tackle, he doesn't do it. In the first half, the possessions for Penn State, the first two times they had the ball, lots of plays, lots of yards, no production, no, production, no result at the end. Saka was 10 of 14, O'Neal led the rushers, and Drayton had five for 35. And Penn State has the ball first down at the Miami 33. 
Lions coming out charged up, particularly with Anderson getting off that big run to, to begin this possession. And they're finding some holes in the Miami defense right now as that play is good to the 29-yard line and Anderson again carries. We have not seen Carter. Kajana Carter, a sophomore out of Westerville, Ohio, has been a sensation, but we haven't seen him so far. 12 carries and 69 yards now for Richie Anderson. J.T. Morris, who's a little bit smaller, but a little bit quicker. He's in at fullback now, replacing O'Neal. This is Anderson. Down to the 20, and a first down for the Lions. And this time, Casey Greer made the tackle stick. Watch the right guard, number 57, Jurak. Actually, he's going to be on the left side here. Number 57 pulls across the formation. That's Riley, 43, being blocked by the center, Sandusky. A big hole in the center of the line. And the Lions continue to move. The ball is on the 21, actually, where it's a first down. Anderson again. Defensive flow gets him out of bounds after about a three-yard pickup. And Greer, a strong safety, knocked him out. Hurricane defense is outstanding. They have been that way last year, and this year it's been the mark of the championship teams. Here you take a look. They're second in the nation in scoring defense, fourth rushing defense, and ninth in total defense. As Caesar is coming off the field, he's had a bad ankle. Yeah, I think he hurt it again. This is the fullback. Brian O'Neill would come back into the ball game, and Brian takes it down around the 10, and he may have another first down. So Brian O'Neill makes it first down. Penn State just short of the Miami 10. So the Miami defense came out uh, apparently a little lazy pair, and now they're being put to the test. They don't even block the left end of the Hurricanes. That's Patrick. He just ran himself out of the play. O'Neal redshirted last year. He wanted the redshirt because he was playing behind Sam Gash, an outstanding fullback. He wanted to let, the, let him have the year, and then he could come back and play two years here by himself. Anderson again. That end is blocked. And he's short. Behind the defense, coming right at you. Smith, 45, gets blocked, and Barrow, 56, gets blocked. Same man, the tight end blocked them both. The safety doesn't get over there to make the play, and Penn State is on the board with their first possession in the second half. So the opening possession is the kind of a thing that wakes up a record crowd of more than 96,000. We have a 10 to 7 ball game, and Miami is yet to see it in the second half. Three years ago, when we introduced the Lexus LS 400s, it was hailed as nearly perfect. Our engineers took that as a challenge. Hitachi makes big screen TVs and 20,000 other entertaining products. Hitachi. Hitachi? 
Uh, I like, um... Actually, I'm kind of busy right now working on a big project. Hitachi makes computer systems and 20,000 other intelligent products. Hitachi. The number one team in the country, the Washington Huskies, host Pac-10 rival California for other key conference matchups. It's game two of an ABC college football doubleheader next. Well, Miami owned the first half, particularly the early going of the first quarter. Now, Joe Paterno has seen his Lions come roaring down the field in eight plays, all run. Just stick it in the end zone. And 61 of those 72 yards was Richie Anderson. V.J. Musillo is in to kick off for Penn State with Kevin Williams and Jonathan Harris. Back to receive. There's Musillo. He is a senior from Long Branch, New Jersey. He's normally the pooch kicker. And he gets it up. And it's Harris. And they sort of use the boundary to help control him. And he brings it back up across the 25 to about the 27. So looking over the folks that come out for the Canes, they're pretty much what you'd expect. The people who started the ball game. Donnell Bennett is the running back. Coleman Bell was uh, pretty quiet in that first half. In fact, I don't think he caught a ball. They threw it to him three times. It might look for him to show up here in the second half. Ten to seven now. We do have a contest. Bennett. And again, they find room over on that, the right side as the penalty flag goes down. So look out for this. Face mask, yeah. five yards. It's on Penn State. Inadvertent face mask by the nose tackle, Vince Stewart. That got a piece of it, reaching, trying to grab the man. Check number 78 in the center of your screen. That's the nose tackle. Stewart, Ben Stewart, inadvertent, had it on there, got it off. When you've had a pretty good play like that, though, and it's run off the side like that, and zone blocking, you, you, you just hold your breath because you just... <laughs> yeah. You almost know you're, you're grabbing. Get dinged, yeah. You're grabbing for anything, and you just sure. happen to have your hand on the face mask, and you realize that you get it off. There's just nothing you can do. Chains out. Check see if it's a first down. And it is. Just by the nose of the ball. We pause here five seconds, so our ABC stations can identify themselves. Miami led at halftime 10 nothing. Penn State took the opening kickoff and with Richie Anderson picking up 61 yards of the drive, eight runs, stick it in the end zone. We've got a 10-7 ball game and now the Miami Hurricanes trying to answer with something. First down at their own 37. Penn State shows blitz. Toretta checks off. Lions back out of it. Toretta looks deep, throws short, incomplete. Pass intended for Bennett out of the backfield, and I did not see a white shirt available to him downfield. So the secondary did very well for Penn State defensively. First half, Miami had five possessions. They scored on their second and fourth possession. Difference here is when they had a chance to score, they did. Big news in the game has been Miami's ability to run the ball. Bennett has 59 yards, and Jones had 38. Shredder only 58 yards in the first half. McKenzie and a whole host of others tied at three uh, tackles in the first half for Penn State. Toretta quickly to Coleman Bell. And Bell picks up about four or five. There's no chance. You can blitz all day and you're not going to get a guy when he lets that ball go that quickly. No, no way. You're not going to get him, but... Uh, you force him to throw it quicker. Penn State has now gone to a nickel defense. Four rushing, two linebackers, and five defensive backs. Miami has yet to throw the ball deep all day. They have not thrown it deep a single time. We have to have time to throw, and uh, the, the running game is working, but the protection has to be thrown quickly. Horace 
Copeland out there covered by Shelley Hammonds, number 21 for Penn State. Hammonds came here as a running back. And he kind of got dinged up a little bit and got lost in that shuffle. He kept going up, and he was always third in the list of running backs. And finally, uh, the coaches suggested he could help the team by going over the defensive side of the ball, and he's tickled to death with it. All right, here's Mr. Trouble, O.J. McDuffie, back there waiting for the punt. That's a terrific kick by Snyder. Over McDuffie's head, it is headed for the coffin corner, and it's going to roll dead inside the five-yard line. A sensational punt by Snyder of 54 yards and dead at the Penn State four. State will start from their own four. They trail by three, 10 to seven. Warren Sapp is in there, a defensive tackle for Miami now, as Mark Caesar came off the field, having re-injured apparently his ankle, and has not returned. It's J.T. Morris and Richie Anderson lined up behind John Saka. Saka has not thrown the ball in the second half. It's been the Richie Anderson show. Saka rolls this one out. Got away from uh, one of the Miami linebackers, number 58, uh, uh, Corwin Francis had him stone cold on the one yard line and he steps to watch this he steps away from him as, uh, as uh, they had a chance for a kill and didn't get it but John Saka is going to lose a foot race uh, getting outside every time to these Miami linebackers just gets back into the playing field Miami that time Keith going with a five man line to stop the run took the free safety out of the ball game. Yeah, it was Michael Barrow that missed it. Barrow doesn't miss that much. This is Anderson. The idea here, of course, is Penn State's back on the four. You want to keep them there and get field position. Here's John. Keith, early upset underway. Arkansas facing Tennessee at midfield. Barry Alani back to pass. Right before he's sacked, he gets it off. Under throw, but Ron Dickerson comes back to it, then reaches the end zone. They lead 10 to 7. And in the Big Ten, the Buckeyes down for the second straight week. This is the second quarter. Keith. Thank you, John. Third down now and five for Penn State. Send Anderson into the crowd. And they've got him two yards short of his first down. So fourth down is coming up, and the Miami defense has done its job. And there again, you see the conservative nature of a paterno coach team. Not saying that it's wrong, just pointing out the fact that if you got a new quarterback in with his fifth start of the season, uh, of his career, back in your own territory, you say, hey, we'll try this draw, and if it doesn't work, we'll punt and play defense. Musello is in to do the kicking. Penalty flag. High kick. Kevin Williams back there. Steps away from one Penn State man, but the second one gets him right around midfield. And that's where they have pushed it dead. But that was a 34-yard punt for Musillo, and uh, let's check the call. Flag was thrown back with a punter. Legal procedure on the kicking team. Kicking team was never set for a second before the snap. You don't want it? You don't want it? Oh, I might like to have that penalty. Legal bow. procedure on the offense declines. First and ten. So the Miami Hurricanes say no, that they will take the ball on the uh, Penn State 49. Next Saturday, we've got a doubleheader first at noon Eastern. You can kind of help me read through it here. You see the games that are going to be seen through much of the country. Out on the West Coast now, you're going to have uh, UCLA Washington State playing at noon followed by USC in California. And then uh, Bob and I will be down with Alabama, Tennessee, and Knoxville in a big, big ball game in the Southeastern Conference. Hard is Kevin Williams and uh, Donnell Bennett running backs, and this is Bennett. That's a big, big hole. I mean, the Miami backs are getting such a hole, they're almost falling down because they haven't seen any place like that to run well, so far this one, season. One of the reasons this is working, Keith, is because of the formation. They're spreading three guys out to the left. Watch the offensive line here. That's uh, Green, uh, number 51, and uh, Etheridge down here blocking on, uh, on uh, Tioka Jackson. But the three wide receivers out here brings a linebacker away from the defense. Donnell Bennett's got 79 yards and a touchdown now, and he'll run it again as Bennett is good play by Ben Foddy. Lou Ben Foddy just fought his way through the traffic, reached out with that one big arm and knocked feet from under him. Here's 
here's the linebacker. Here's the linebacker right here. When they when they go to these three wide receivers, you got him covering him, one in, and the other guy's got to come out. Now, he's a linebacker. He would normally be lined up in here more against the run. Second down and 14. This is a pass play. I think he drilled the umpire, didn't he? Nailed the umpire with that pass. And we get a little scuffle breaking out, but the umpire took the full force of that hard throw, and uh, the ball fell down, and we're going to have a little time here in behalf of the umpire because he really took a lick. And Coretta's a big, strong guy, and when he throws a hummer, he uh, he takes a lick. This is Carl Crawley. Now watch this ball. Watch right in the middle of the screen. Coretta not looking at, you never look at striped shirts. Right in the center oh, of me. his chest. Right on the old I mean, bone. as a quarterback, you've got enough things to look at. You're looking at uh, protection and uh, other colored jerseys, and you're looking at guys crossing. You, you don't factor in striped shirts. Here we go, Mayor Sandy. You just think that they're going to get out of the way. If they see the ball coming, they're going to get out of the way. When you don't expect it, it's worse. Well, he's the umpire is not watching the quarterback, and the quarterback's not watching him. The umpire has to watch the offensive and defensive lineman. He is the primary guy that calls all the holding penalties. So it makes it a third down. He's also just part of the equipment, part of the field. So if in fact the ball hit him, that's big, no big deal for his. He's concerned, and he belongs there. So it is third down and 14, and back goes Coretta. His pass is away. And it is incomplete. Penalty flag. Miami people are applauding on the one side of the field. Ineligible downfield on the offense. But I don't know why it's ineligible downfield. I guess the Miami player thought maybe interference was going to be called. But well, it was a checkoff, Keith. I rather think that somebody didn't hear the checkoff and one of the linemen went downfield. So it's not a productive possession for the Miami Hurricanes as they're going to have to punt it away here on uh, the clock showing 748 to play in the third quarter. 10 to 7 Miami leads by three. Here's the ineligible man right here. Go ahead and run it. Look in the center of the screen. Now stop it right there. There's the center or the guard. I can't tell which one, but he obviously didn't get the check off. Because he was downfield and a good, good, uh, very alert call by the officials. Snyder's kick, not very good. He was trying to pooch it up and trying to knock it downfield, and uh, he just a terrible kick. Probably going to be five or six yards. Five yards. That's a lack of concentration when you get involved in a moment like that. And so here's Penn State now. They're red hot. As we cut away and go to the play, and there's the third sack of the ball game by Miami, as Kenny Lopez got in and got a piece of second. But what we were trying to show you there, the only loss by Joe Paterno's uh, Brooklyn Prep team as a high school senior was to St. Cecilia of Inglewood, New Jersey, and that was a team coached by Vince Lombardi. Who was a Fordham Ram, in case you don't know. The ball rests now back at the 28 where it is second down and a big 17 for Penn State. First down play action ended up in a sack. Penetration this time on Anderson. Michael Barrow stung a little bit by the fact he probably missed a play a while ago he should have made. This time he got his man. Well, watch the center. He's going to snap the ball and then he's going to miss the block on Barrow. The middle linebacker runs around the block. Barrow with the quickness sees that the handoff is still deep in the second and the backfield. I've got time to run around the block and make the tackle. Six and a half minutes to go. Third quarter, 10 to 7 Miami. Third down and 19. Straighten down the middle. They go to the sideline pattern. The pass is incomplete intended for O.J. McDuffie. And the coverage was by Paul White. 
Penn State, Keith, continues to throw the ball into the short side of the field. They started the game out that way, and they're throwing the ball into the short side of the field, and that one was forced and could have been intercepted. They have thrown, however, 231 passes without an interception. Well, if you go back through the Fiesta Bowl, it's 239 without having one picked up. This kick is right down the side and kicks out of bounds, and it's up around the 45-yard line, so it's going to be good field position for Miami after an ordinary sort of a kick. Monday out of Washington, D.C., AFC, NFC, the Denver Broncos and the Washington Redskins. The comeback kid, John Elway, taking the Bronx, leading the charge, trying to handle Washington, who's a bit angered, I would think, by a slow start. Certainly, Mark Rippon a uh, bit frustrated and ready to start throwing the ball a little better. Desmond Howard playing any? Oh, yeah. That's good. Return? He's scored a touchdown. Two weeks ago. Eastern time here on ABC. This is Toretta loaded up and lets it go. Lamar Thomas on the run. Can't get there. Ball's incomplete. Shelly Hammonds had the responsibility of coverage. But if that ball is thrown a little better, I don't know if Shelly could have covered him. That's the first time the Hurricanes have gone deep all day. Toretta, an outstanding arm, loves to throw it deep. And the reason they're not throwing it deep is because some of the confusion in the secondary and other times they just have the, 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 the men are playing so deep you just can't get there and Toretta doesn't have the time. He takes time to throw deep. up here at the 48-yard line has got his foot down. He's got the upfield foot planted. That means the ball is dead right there. Let's go back and take a look in the trenches. That's Barber, number 60. And Bennett just bounces out. There was no hole there. The Miami running back's doing a nice job. We thought we'd see some of Danielle Ferguson, the true freshman who has more speed and quickness, but I think Erickson is really pleased with the running game, and he doesn't want to take a chance in putting in the two freshmen. Third down and seven is Larry Jones. He's your running back. Oh, what a catch. What a catch by Kevin Williams. He's only 5'9", but by the time he extended his arms and hands, he was 6'5". Well, we talked about the linebackers having to cover some of these wide receivers. Take a look here. Givens, number 58, is right here. He is going to have to cover Kevin Williams. Now, he's going to come down, make a move, and shake the linebacker, and he's going to come right over the center of the field. Right there, nice little move and a spin. The ball would have been thrown a little better where he wouldn't have to die for it. He made it could have run for it. Rudy Barber is a man hurt, 285-pound weak side guard. Jason Boudroni will replace him, but it's not a leg. The Barber is a very, very important figure along that offensive front. get a yard with Larry Jones carrying. Here's something else that's unusual in this ball game. I don't know, maybe it's the air, but there have been no penalties on Miami so far in this ball game. <laughs> it is unusual, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it can't be the water because I don't think they've had any. They haven't been here long enough. Bonna and Thomas. They're, they're carrying this uh, little extracurricular activities here. They had a, they got this going from back from last year. Yeah. Thomas beat Bonner from last year. That's a hangover. Here we go. Uh -huh. Little roll for Toretta looking. Gets it away now. Oh, my goodness. He had Coleman Bell open, and he couldn't get the ball to him. Bell had finally broken free down around the 21-yard line, and Toretta just simply feeling the pressure coming, could not get it to him. So it'll be third down and nine. There's a look at Jerry Sandusky, defensive coordinator, doing a nice job coordinating the Penn State defense. He's been doing it a few years for Paternal. In fact, 24 years. 
He's been coordinating the defense. The offensive coordinator, Fran Gander, 22 years. A lot of uh, experience on this Penn State staff. Loretta under pressure throws this one, and it's almost picked off. Could have been, but number 46, who came flashing in to get a piece of it for Penn State. That would be Marlon Forbes, strong safety. So the Canes have to kick it away. And the record crowd of 96,704 comes up. This is the sixth punt of the day by Paul Snyder, and his last one was embarrassing, a five-yarder. This time he can swing away. He doesn't have to worry about who's kicking it. And he knocked it into the end zone. So you've got 343 to go in the third quarter. Penn State gets the ball back at their own 20, and Miami leads 10 to 7. This is what follows us. It's a big ball game there in the uh, Pac-10. Michigan State, Michigan, obviously that, you know, the uh, Oklahoma, Texas, the, that's played at the Cotton Bowl when the Texas State Fair is going on. And I'm, I'm about ready to go back now. I haven't had, I haven't had a corny <laughs> dog just, in a while. You're just going to the game because of the State Fair. Horn dogs, oh my goodness. Bob Goodrich could whoop down 12 and everything. <laughs> Richie Anderson trying to find some daylight coming to the right side, and there's any there. Half a yard at the most. You haven't heard me call the names Klein and Patrick a whole lot today. Well, it's because they're looking at a different kind of an offense. So Klein is the man to get credit for that last time. Good point there. Last week against FSU, a lot of passing. They were upfield. Today, more conservative, runoff-oriented offense. Not as much uh, attention, certainly no sacks. Bucky Greeley snapping the ball now for Penn State, and Dusty out for a moment, and that's a takedown behind the line of scrimmage by Rohan Marley. 5'8", 200 pounds, that's Bob Marley's youngin', and he's in there to make the tackle. You'd say, how in the world can somebody 5'8", 200 pounds play linebacker? Well, again, he's built like a pickup truck. <laughs> First off, you can't find him, and secondly, when he hits you, he hurts. And third, uh, he's considered by Tony, uh, by Tommy Tuberville, the best open field tackler out of that linebacking court. Sonny Lubeck, the defensive coordinator, says he gets from here to there in no time. And he, uh, he may be like a dump truck, but he gets there like a Corvette. <laughs> you just gave him a new nickname. Uh -huh. He would be the vet from now on. Kind of cut out of the same uh, mold of Sam Mills. Here they come. Black, knocked down at the line of scrimmage. I think Darren Smith was the man that knocked him down, number 45. Uh huh. And so that's not a very pretty offensive possession for Penn State either. And they're going to give that ball back to Miami with pretty good field position. Take a look from the end zone. Watch the left side. Number 71, Rucci is blocking on Smith and lets him go. They did a little twist. You saw where he was trying to throw the ball, but uh, not coordinated between the uh, offensive linemen. So Musillo is in the punt. Reese punted first. He had a 43-yarder, but Musillo's been doing it since. That's a pretty good kick. It's back inside the 40, and a fair catch call by Kevin Williams at the 37. So it's a 44-yarder with no return. Maybe that's why Musillo's in there. He also seems to take one less step. That's certainly something to consider when you're playing folks like Miami. I would think a quarterback who has played these kind of people before would look at that Miami defense when they decide to blitz and think somebody turned a cubby of quail on something. Well, you certainly turn up the, uh, the, the clock. You don't know you have much time to throw. Gaines won it. And the pickup is about two, maybe three yards for Donnell Bennett. Bennett is a 227-pound sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale, so he's going to be around a while. Mario Cristobal shaken up. Defense! 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 He's coming off injury. Second down and seven. Larry Jones. One back and the ball. Oh, big run. Look at this. 
all the way down across his midfield and goes out of bounds at the Penn State 47 yard line. Canes are starting to get a feeling here they're running downhill. Well, we, we, we talked about in the opening how that Toretta had been carrying this team, he and the defense, with their passing, coming in seventh in the nation in passing, and how they were 106th out of 107 teams rushing the ball. That's not the case this afternoon. Toretta only has 74 yards passing, but the running game has been, has been what's keeping him in the ball game. Kevin Williams and Jonathan Harris are coming out here wide to the bottom of the picture now. Miami has rushed for 130 yards, passed for 74. This will be a pass. And Toretta goes down hard. I mean, he is put on his back by Reggie Gibbons. And that ignites the crowd. Here's another look at uh, Gibbons, 58. Uh, Paterno says he's as good a linebacker as we've ever had here. And they've had some good ones. Toretta checking off, and the wide receiver didn't get the call, and I think the lineman didn't get it either. Nope. Toretta's only one of his last 11. That's the first time today that Gino has really been dicked. Yeah. He's got single coverage out here on the wide guy, but he's been checking off, and they haven't been hearing him. Play and making the tackle is Eric Flair, number 89, and here's John Saunders. Illinois and Ohio State and the Illini trying to add to their lead, but Jeff Kinney here as time runs down, it's tipped. Tim Walton picks it up, 59 yards. Watch Kinney get wiped out on that block. That set up a field goal of 25 yards to get the Buckeyes within two at halftime. North Carolina and Florida State. Charlie Ward just ran one in from three yards up. They're out 29 to 10. Keep. Third and 10. Miami throw it. Toretta's pass. Penalty flag down. They probably got a holding call here. And the pass is incomplete to bring up fourth down. So they may decline the penalty. Kind of interesting looking at that Illinois Ohio State score. Holding. Awesome. Yep. They'll decline that. Jason Verdusco has been put on the bench. Yeah, isn't that something? Led the uh, Big Ten in passing uh, last year, maybe the year before. Now John Makovic leaves, yep. and the whole system changes. Yeah, Lou Tepper doesn't want a drop-back pro-style passing attack, yep. so Kenny's in the backfield. Yep. They're now in the third quarter in that ball game. Arkansas leading Tennessee 13-7. to And uh, they did take the penalty. They did take it. Well, they took it from the point of the foul, so uh, move it back 10 from the point of the foul, and you got a big penalty. You got a huge penalty. It's third and 29, so it's a 19 yard penalty. That's the first penalty of the day for Miami, and it was a whopper. Third and 29. the back of his legs. Well, Bonna, Bonna's done an outstanding job all day. Uh, he was a running back in high school. In fact, uh, broke some of the state records that Tony Dorsett held in the state of Pennsylvania. And as uh, Joe Paterno does sometimes, he moves some of his players around, and Bonna's been an outstanding DB for a few years. McDuffie standing back inside his 30 for Snyder's punt. Pretty good kick by Snyder. It's going to run McDuffie back to the play. Got a hole up the middle, but really didn't get his motor running quick enough. 45-yard punt, 16-yard return. However, that's a good return. And here is Penn State now with good field position up at the 36-yard line to start this possession. A three-point ball game, 10 to 7. The Canes with time ticking down here in the third quarter. The uh, Air Force ROTC cadets were outside the stadium today collecting money for the uh, hurricane relief in Florida, Louisiana, and Hawaii. And had a pretty good day, $15,276.25. All right. Way to go, guys. Pressure, pressure. Yes, I understand. Intercepted. Here goes Darren Prime. It's a touchdown. Find the interception, and that breaks that long string of pass attempts. 
And I think it's 240 or so. And we're in that range. But it blows up on him. Well, we mentioned we haven't mentioned Darren Crine very often. Take a look. It's a blitz. The two outside linebackers are coming. Nobody picks him up. That's Armstead who causes Sacker to throw the ball right to Darren Crine for the touchdown. Defense scores for the Hurricanes. So that string of 261 passes without an interception going back through the Fiesta Bowl is snapped partially. It was Armstead with the pressure, trying the interception, and touchdown, and here is Pruitt for the point. He hooked that thing in over to the left side, but he got it in the upright, and it's a 10-point lead again for Miami at 17-7. Go back and take a look. The lower right-hand side of your screen, that's Farmstead, the linebacker. 20, Anderson won't even block him. Miss, now the young quarterback tries to make something out of nothing. Right there, this is a veteran ball club. 21 of the two 22 starters are juniors and seniors. But Saka is playing only in his fifth game and throws a big interception. There's a look at crying number 91. That was Huntington, 66. It's a screen. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Trying to slide out there a little bit too quickly. And when, when Saka got hit by Armstead, it threw the ball off, and he just threw it out in the flat. And is a 17-17 ball game with 14 seconds to play in the third quarter. It's a big play, Keith. Miami had been struggling offensively. Penn State came out in the second half and really had had whatever momentum was in the second half, they had it, even though they had been exchanging punts. They seem to find a way. Good kick. That's J.T. Morris. To about the 22-23. He'll have one snap before the end of the third quarter, and here comes young Saka now. After the interception and the touchdown. I think the relationship between Paterno and John Saka is better than it was with Tony Saka and Paterno. I think you're right. Tony always wanted to throw a little bit more. I think if the, 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 if the truth be known, Paterno now is much ready to throw the ball. Uh, a little bit more with, with his quarterbacks than he was with Tony was here the last three or four years. And back to Anderson. And Richie Anderson holding his way across the 30 to the 32. He's about a yard short of the first down. The quarter is over. 17-7 Miami. We'll be back after this message and the word from our ABC station. At the Beaver Stadium, State College, Pennsylvania, Penn State University. Those are the hands of the Miami Hurricanes. Four fingers. The fourth quarter, they say, belongs to us. Well, in recent history, it pretty much has. And the hand of Mother Nature now starting to offer colors that are just unbelievable in this part of the country. It is second down and one. Penn State. The ball is at their own 32-yard line. John Saka throws. Great catch by Brayton. Terrific catch by Floyd Brayton. And a big play for Penn State. It's at least midfield. And you hit the nail on the head when you said a great throw by Saka. I mean, he was covered all over the place. Saka coming back from that interception and just throwing a strike. Somebody asked uh, Saka the other day about uh, Paterno and talking with him and allows, does he does he allow you to check off? And he says, well, he lets me check off the, uh, about the same way, uh, maybe a little bit more than what Ditka did with uh, Harbaugh. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty good for a, for a young quarterback from his fifth start. 49-yard line of mine. They give the ball to Richie Anderson. He's lucky to keep it because Darren Smith was all over him and uh, was crying there as well. They were trying to knock that ball loose and almost did. After three quarters, uh, the total plays are about the same. Rushing yardage in favor of Penn State, total yardage Penn State. Time of possession Penn State, but the one that counts is the scoreboard. 
Miami with that defensive touchdown is up by 10. Saka still got it. Paid for it. Darren Smith ran him down 45, got him at, uh, up high, and Pat Riley got him down low. Just shows the speed of that defense. Some and kind Riley. of a fire over yeah. there across the way in the stadium, too. And a smoke oh, bomb or something. That looks like a some kind of a smoke bomb. Nothing to burn here. Oh, no. There you they'd run that with OJ Duffy. McDuffie inside to try to run that uh, wide receiver screen, and it, it works enough for the first down. But uh, McDuffie can really move that ball. Here's Jack. Well, Keith, you know, we've always told the story about O.J. McDuffie being named by his grandmother after O.J. Simpson. You may wonder why he doesn't wear number 32. Well, he uses 24 because of his Uncle Homer, who played at Bluffton College. He says he's his childhood hero. Back in the days when his hairstyles were different. Uh-huh. Saka, a little quick pop on to McDuffie. That's another first down. Very close to it. That's only his third catch of the day. McDuffie uh, has caught some punts, but not shook and loose on those. Paternal says this is the best athlete we've ever had at Penn State. Talking about McDuffie. Three catches, 37 yards so far. 17 to 7. Miami leading with 12.40 to play in the game. First down, ball at the 27. Up the middle for Ricky Anderson. He's over 100 yards, and then some. He went over 100 yards at the close of the third quarter. So, uh, he's rolling up the total. And on the sideline calling the plays for the uh, Nittany Lions, Fran Ganner, the uh, offensive coordinator for uh, Joe Paterno, has been in that position for 22 years. I mentioned earlier, this staff has a lot of experience, and Joe turns him loose to call most of the game. 22-yard line. This is O'Neill. Pullback. And they stop him at uh, 19. And it's a two-yard uh, gain and two yards remaining. And here's John quickly. Keith Kansas and Kansas State and Maurice Douglas. Seven yards between the tacklers to the end zone. Jayhawks have a 7 nothing lead in the second quarter. Keith. Lynn Mason really turned things around. It's know. been a while since those two teams met with winning records. And certainly had. Third down and two. Back of pass almost picked up. Marley almost had that thing going the other way. I'd like to see a 5'8", 200-pound linebacker with an interception running <laughs> the other way. I mean, I just see how... I bet you wouldn't be able to see his feet. Uh, well, what do you do here? Do you kick the field goal? I would Take points. You got a chance for points, you get points. I agree with you. You got 11 minutes and 21 seconds to play in the ball game. That's, That's right. a lot of time. That's right. He hasn't been too good on field goals today. He's had one blocked, and he had uh, one go to the left. Missed from 20 yards. This is 36 yards. The blocked one was at 48 yards. tell you it's amazing now, it, I would never in the world think that Craig Fayak is going to come out here and now my a late flag and a call against Miami and that's going to give him the first down oh what was that both sides defense first down wow how big is that huh talk about a big big lined up Lined up over here on the right side, on the far end. You just line up, so that's like a turnover. You take the ball, you would have gotten the ball back. Now you give it back to him. That's just, Ziegler. just like a turnover. That's the corner. Ziegler uh, is the man who blocked the uh, field goal try. Right. Trying to get another one. Lined up offside and then moved offside. And then uh, on fourth and two, that gives them a first down. 
Penn State first down at the Miami 14. Let's see if they can cash it in. That's Anderson looking for daylight. He's down to the seven. He got half of the distance. Casey Greer made the tackle for the Kane. This is the tenth play of this possession. But remember, a huge five-yard penalty. Offsides. Sackers pass. Too far. Intended for O.J. McDuffie. Jay is from Warrensville Heights, Ohio. Saka in the ball game, now 13 of 22 for 127 yards and an interception. Neither quarterback has really done that much. It's been a game of defenses, very similar to the Florida State Miami game last week. people who really hit him and stopped him short of the first down. So you got fourth and one. They went for the field goal a while ago and missed it. Got lucky with the offside call and on fourth and one they're going for it. I think one of the reasons he's going for it is kicker has not been that good and this is a tough angle Keith. In close all the way over on the hash mark. His kicker today has already missed three. Also I'm sure in Joe's mind gut check time. Anderson. Play. Wow. Well, there you're seeing why this Miami team has good, been good for so long. It's the defense. It's the offense that has all of the wide receivers and all of the, the uh, bells and whistles, but it's the defense that, that wins championships for you, and they've won them two of the last three years. Barrow makes the first hit, and then a host of other defenders come along. Score remains 17 7 Miami. The, the play, the fourth down play. It's going to be a toss. Here's Barrow. Now watch him. Nobody get a hat on him. All the defensive linemen keep the offensive linemen off of him. He sees the play. Greer takes the initial block, and then the tackle is made by Barrow. Just getting there and making the play. Ten tackle in the ball game. Ten. Ball is handed to Larry Jones. They hit him at the goal line, but he shook loose from uh, Derek Bonner and got out to about the three. Bonner blitzing almost got it. Yes. Penn State has been inside the Miami 15 yard line five times and it's only put four points on the board once. They just had 13 plays and produced no points plus the offside call against them. You see that Jones had to retreat off the contact with Bonner into the end zone. Jones has 10 carries and 54 yards. Toretta puts it up. And uh, he had to throw it in a huge hurry. And here we get a little showboat back in the end zone. Uh, as they are exulting over the fact that uh, they were able to get Toretta. And I think Joe's probably arguing that he threw the ball away because it was thrown up into the crowd. He's one of his last 13 passes. Well, this is a corner blitz. Bonner, number 35, comes from the outside. And Coleman, 17, can't get there. Here he comes from out here. He's a cornerback coming along the outside. When Penn State has you backed up inside your 10, they like to bring their corners, especially when you don't have a flanker to that side. Jonathan Harris was an open receiver. There's no way that play was going to work for anything. That's uh, Jones carrying the ball, and uh, Lou Benfati takes him down with authority. And so Miami now is going to have to punt out of the end zone. So all of a sudden, the Penn State defense catches fire, but they're still trailing by 10 points. The defense has really dominated in the second half here. Miami offensively has not done a thing. That was their uh, 
their fourth possession, or their fifth possession, and they punted all five times. Eight punt of the day by Snyder. Penalty flags. And the punt gets a pretty good roll. It rolls out of bounds at the 46-yard line of Miami. Let's see about the flag. 44 yards on the punt. Sides, defense lining up in the neutral zone. So Penn State makes a out of a silly little mistake, and they'll get a chance to kick it again. Do you want to kick it again? You got yeah, McDuffie. So. You got McDuffie back here. He's one of the. He's run three punts back for touchdowns in his career. Not this year, but he is dangerous. And you're you downhill from here. Order. You got. Uh, you got fourth and thirteen. So you bring it out. He won't have to stand in the end zone. He got a net 44 yards on that kick. They're going to do it anyway. Well, I'd kick it, but I'd kick it left. I wouldn't kick it down the middle of the field. Oh, that's not as good a kick. But it, it rolls away from uh, McDuffie. He has no chance to put his hands on it, and so it does wind up a, a plus factor for Miami, just about the distance of the foul, really. Went from a 44-yarder to 47 yards. 8.46 to play in the game. So Penn State has the ball back at its 45 instead of having it over on the Miami 44 after that the penalty and, and the punt. And back goes John Saka to throw. Punch it and lets it fly. Tyson Thomas is there. And it is incomplete. He was over his head. It was not a catchable pass. And here's Jack. Well, Keith, we're real pleased to have on the sidelines Rusty Medeiros. We talked to him briefly before in last week's game. But, Rusty, first of all, you're doing a lot better. But are you surprised at how much your team is running on the ground? I'm real surprised. Uh, offensive line did a heck of a job. Having Mario Cristobal back is just a, a godsend. He, he is a leader and inspiration to the team. Well, good luck to you. Okay, thanks. I, I'd like to thank everybody for all the cards and letters across the United States, and uh, thank my mom and my dad. Showing sure remarkable uh, recovery. I mean, it's just amazing after that kind of an injury. That's a tough run there by J.T. Morris. Boy, he just wasn't about to quit. The sophomore from Lynchburg, Virginia. Jesse Armstead finally wrestled him down, but he picked up about eight yards the hard way. Tennessee's finally scored in that ball game. Now that's in Knoxville. Too. And, uh, got volunteers got caught looking, waiting for the tide, I think. Put the football at uh, near the 46. Eight minutes to play in a ball game. 17-7 Miami. They go for the first down. Ball is loose on the ground. If Penn State recovered, they've got the first down. I think Miami had a shot at it. Let's see as they unwind them. Well, Ryan, on Mac, uh, Ryan McNeil says we've got it. They don't. Penn State's got it. J.T. Morris. It was awfully silent in the stadium. <laughs> there wasn't anybody breathing. Was Nobody it? was breathing. <laughs> Handoff. He didn't have it real good to begin with, and the ball was knocked loose. And Krein made the tackle, and the ball is just flying. Ball was Miami's when they went down, but Penn State stole it away. Eight minutes to go, or about eight minutes. Penn State needs to score on this drive, either a field goal or a touchdown. You figure they're going to have the ball maybe uh, one more time, maybe two. You get into a pileup like that, it's just a wrestling match with the ball. Yeah. They got it back. That ball is knocked down at the line of scrimmage, number 43. Big Pat Riley. I think he's going to be a star down the road. I mean, he's just growing every week I see him play. Sophomore, 270 pounds from Marrero, Louisiana. 6-6. Six, six. Second down and 10 for the Lions. Saka has cooled off. Only 13 of 24, 127 yards, and the key interception that was returned for a touchdown. One of his last 11. Anderson, deep back. Rich has got it. Won't let him go outside and 
Barrow comes inside and seals it and takes him down. The Honda Scholar Athlete Award this week to E.J. Sandusky, the center for Penn State. This is brought to you by American Honda, supporting amateur athletics. He's a fifth-year senior, graduated this past spring with a degree in finance. He is the son of Jerry Sandusky, the Nittany Lion defensive coordinator. Under presenting a check for $3,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Penn State University. Second look at Long, goes down the middle, Long, and got his man. Pass is caught down at the 25-yard line by O.J. McDuffie. What a catch by McDuffie. Well, McDuffie came into the game by far the favorite receiver of John Saka. Came in with 25 receptions and five touchdowns. And that is a big first down right there for Penn State. Four catches, 56 yards for O.J. They put the ball at the 23 of Miami. Six minutes and 50 seconds to play in the game. O'Neal is back in the backfield with Anderson. O'Neal has the ball over the right side to the 15-yard line. at 6.23 to play in the game. That's the third one if you want to go that far would be the timeouts remaining. 17 to 7, Miami. Penn State now really needs something here. Second down and one. Saka faking, keeps it, and throws it. pass of the year and he doesn't have a lot of room or a lot of time left he just gets that ball in over two hurricane defenders and McDuffie makes the catch for a touch and Penn State is right back in it the kick is good Payak knocks it through and uh, John Saka went to the sideline immediately after the play and the trainer immediately put ice up in the collarbone area. Saka running a little post corner behind the corner. The safety number six is supposed to be back there helping. Well, you can't throw it much better than that. John Saka starting in his first big game from the other side of the field. But he did get dinged. How badly, we don't know. Won't know until they get the ball back. That score comes with 6.17 to play in the game. Eight plays, 54 yards, and it requires two minutes and 49 seconds, and here we'll take five seconds so our ABC stations can identify themselves. There's second. This is WFTV, Channel 9, Orlando. What has he done? Somebody whacked him uh, in the collarbone area? Has he separated a shoulder or what? Looks all right. Oh, there's ice under there, see? Yeah, there is ice under there. He's hurting. Yep. He got up and immediately he was not part of the celebration after the touchdown at all. 81 quarters, nobody has scored two touchdowns in a quarter against Miami. Penn State just got one. 17-14 ball game. Another defensive struggle. Rife with tension and nerves. High kick. Bearcats is called, and the Bearcats is called by Dietrich Clausel. He did that twice last week against Florida State. He was the man, the tight end, who caught the touchdown pass to win the Arizona game. Eight to seven. 
So the record crowd of 96,704 comes up now to cheer the Penn State defense. Larry Jones is the running back for Miami. Loretta has been shut down in the second half. One of 13 in his last uh, 13 passes is Toretta. Gives it to Jones. Jones picks up nine yards. Miami's running game has been good all day. We were uh, told that they may play Danielle Ferguson some in this ballgame, the true freshman. They haven't needed him. Tennessee has now gone ahead of Arkansas. 17 to 16. And Ohio State has gone ahead of Illinois, 16 to 15. And that run by Jones is good enough to bring the chains out. And, and I believe he's got his first down. He does. By so about a half a ball. Look at the freshman there, Keith, that uh, has a little more speed and quickness than the other backs. But the offensive line is doing a nice job. And the hurricane running game is back. But uh, Penn State needs to stop him somewhere along here and get a chance to put more points on the board. Jones now has 63 yards, and Bennett, 81 yards, rushing for the Hurricanes. Ball at the 32-yard line, first down. 17-14, Miami lead. Jones, that's about three yards as he crosses the 35. And the clock is moving now at 5.25 to play. Defensively now here, Keith, the posture is we have to do something to stop them from making first downs or to turn the ball over. So you're going to see a little bit more gambling style of defense, maybe some blitzes off of the corner or from the linebackers. And when you do that, you leave yourself open for some big plays in the passing game, especially with these receivers that the Miami Hurricanes have with all the speed. Uh, Copeland just came off. Spencer came in. He and Kevin Williams arrived at the bottom of the picture, and Thomas is up at the top. Second down, they hand the ball to Jones again, and Jones is going anywhere this time. Number 39, the man at the bottom, Lee Rubin. It's a nice play by Rubin. He had to come a long way. Miami in the second half has not done much offensively. They've had the ball. Well, they've had the ball five times before this drive, and they've punted each time. In fact, they've had the ball ten times in the game and had eight punts, one touchdown, and one field goal. So, and one of the reasons is that man right there, defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky. Third down and five. Donnell Bennett in the backfield. Loretta puts it up, fly down the sideline. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. No, he did not. The man standing there on the side says no. He's saying he went out of bounds. You can go out of bounds. Well, here it is again. It's blitz you coverage. Can do that. There he's touched. You can go out of bounds. Now you can come back in. That's a catch. And you can go out of bounds if you're shoved out of bounds in college, and you can come right back in. Was there contact? Yes, there was contact. Well, let's see it again. The referee's mic is out, so we're not going to get any further clarification. You can't run out of bounds, but right there he's pushed, and he goes out of bounds, okay? Now he's back in bounds. You see the official throw the bean bag. It looked to me like he caught the ball. I thought the play was good. I know that you can be pushed out and you can come back. I think he was signaling illegal participation and you can't go out and come back in. Whatever, it's putt for Miami and Snyder shoots it out of there. Runs McDuffie back to the nine. He comes back across the 15 to about the 17. Well, there will be 
some debate on that call if uh, Penn State wins this football game. But uh, if you are pushed, if there is contact, you're pushed out of bounds. You are allowed to. We had that play last week. Exactly, last great. week. In the in, in the National Football League, if you go out of bounds, you cannot yeah. come back That's in right. and make the first play on the ball. Right. In college, if you're forced out, you can do that. All right, Jack. Well, Keith, what we're being told down here on the sidelines is that he was not pushed out of bounds, therefore going out of bounds, <laughs> that they're going to rule that it was an incomplete catch. He was. There was contact. Yeah. Clearly seen. Go big. Going for Thomas. It is incomplete. Of course, the home folks now want to call on everything. Ryan McNeil was defending. Along with Casey Greer. Those two right there. And your clock shows 339. 17 14 Miami. Miami defense has not allowed more than one touchdown in a quarter for 81 consecutive quarters. They've already allowed one earlier in this quarter to Penn State. J.T. Morris in the backfield. He's got the ball. And they won't let him turn the corner as Darius Harris came up and put the first hit on him. I mean, I want to tell you, there's some hitting going out there. Morris is delivering some blows, and the Hurricanes are really delivering some, too. Good hard-hitting ball game. I don't see how in the world they can play two games in a row like this. It's just incredible. It was a sellout time last week, and here they are again. But that road record for the Hurricanes is something. 37 of their last 41, they've won on the road. Three minutes coming up to play in the game. Third down and eight. Third down conversions today. Penn State's five on 14. After his pass is away, and it's too high for O.J. McDuffie. Double coverage on McDuffie. And John had to go somewhere with it, and so he went toward number 24. And that's my bad choice. Two minutes and 49 seconds now, and Penn State's going to have to punt it. Joe's been there a few times, hasn't he? Yep. That's the winningest active coach in college football division one two national championships in fact these two teams have won a five of the last uh, nine you still ought to kick it and it goes out of bounds so it's a 36 yard punt the ball goes out on about the miami 45 and there the canes will have it with two minutes and 45 seconds to play in the game 17-14 Miami. And those are the games that are coming up across the country. Some on pay-per-view or some of them in your area. So why don't you check it out and see what game is free and which game you can have for $8.95. It's a great time of the year, isn't it? Fall, the cool love, weather. Just absolutely love it. You know, Joe Stone Crab, the restaurant open down there. So in Miami, we know that the season is uh, upon us. Had some great Stone Crabs last week. First down and... Uh, Toretta now checking off. Hands it away to Larry Jones. And Jones will have three, maybe four. More like three, I think. And the clock is again running. We're getting down to the point now where Penn State's going to have to start spending time out to stop the clock, and they just spent one right there. Stopping it at 2.34. Seventeen to fourteen. The time remaining: two minutes and thirty-four seconds. It is Miami's ball. Second down and seven. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. Donnell Bennett is now the one back for the team. Toretta's pass is good to Kevin. No, it is. No, it is. Didn't get it. He had to turn back for it, and he couldn't do it. But he had what he wanted. He had a linebacker trying he to did. cover Kevin Williams. He sure did. These two teams, six of the last nine national championships have been won by Miami or Penn State. 
Doretta is now one of his last 15. And that was the reason that was pass was incomplete. He was there, it was wide open, but the lack of confidence that he has right now just, just didn't get it there. Gets this one there from Lamar Thomas. Thomas falls ahead across the 45. So it depends on the mark. Well, what a throw that was, Keith. You got to pick up a first down. Givens almost picked that ball off. Timeout. Chains on. I'm not sure this is the first down. 219 to play in the game. 17 14, Miami. Oh, boy. Just that close. <laughs> we've, had, we've had some close measurements today. I'm telling you, at least a half of them have been less than the length of the ball. Thomas is going to run it out, but watch right here. Watch the linebacker as he runs out. He almost gets underneath and picks this ball off. This is third down and about six. You're trying to run the clock out. If he picks that ball off, Toretta and the confidence... If he lost it on the previous play, he certainly got it back very quickly. Yeah, that number, that number 58 out there is Reggie Gibbons, who's picked off some in his career. They run it with Larry Jones. And down at the line of scrimmage by Rich McKenzie. But as far as Miami is concerned, the clock. Now showing 156, and it's frozen there. As Penn State has Penn one. Penn State called the timeout. They have one remaining. One left. Well, it's it's it seems like it's a surprise every week with this crowd. Of course, this is not over. But Bennett has run for 81 yards. Jones has run for 74 yards, and uh, that's almost more than they had total coming into the. They were averaging 82 yards a, for the team coming into the game, and they both have uh, almost that and more. Yeah. It'll be second down and 10. The ball at the uh, 44 of uh, Penn State when play resumes. And uh, November 21, I believe it is, uh, Miami goes to Syracuse in a Big East game. Miami uh, really has hit the tough part of their schedule. Last week, well, two weeks ago, Arizona, as it turns out, they're a pretty good football team. And then last week, FSU, up here, Penn State up here. The rest of their schedule is not as difficult. Greg Smith there on the left side of your screen is the assistant head coach in charge of the offensive line. He's got to be pretty pleased with the way things have gone today. Bozell late getting on the field. He had been out there. Then we timed out the game. He came off, and now he's back. And Bennett's the running back. And Bennett picked up a yard short of the line of scrimmage by Derek Bonner. And Bonner has just been flying all over the place today. He is something special. He really is. He's not uh, doesn't have uh, a lot of the speed, but. Paterno does a lot of this, changing players back and forth. We mentioned earlier that Bonner was a running back. A lot of players uh, have changed positions uh, under uh, Joe uh, Paterno's system. So you can see Penn State has burned its last time out. The thrifty car rental postgame report comes after the game, if there is time for it, before we go off to the rest of our games today. And there are some good ones. And there have been, you know, oftentimes the fifth and or sixth week of a season are upset specials. There's always one weekend, it seems, in every college football season mm -hmm. where somebody breaks it on to China. <laughs> this seems to have been that weekend. Tennessee has finally pulled out to a lead over Arkansas with a little bit of breathing room. They break to China. <laughs> a minute and 51 seconds to play in this one. No timeouts remaining now for the Nittany Lions. They didn't know a whole lot about themselves because uh, they, the feeling was that they really had not been tested in their five wins uh, prior to today. Three points, uh, anything is possible still with 151 to play. Penn State can get the ball back. If they stop this, uh, this play, third and 11, they will get the ball back. 
but not with a lot of time. Be interesting to see what the Hurricanes go with. I think they've got to throw it. Don't you? I think if they throw it, they're going to throw it long down the sideline. Throwing the ball, Keith, is if you don't hit it, it stops the clock. Right. And if they would have run it, they could have gotten 25 seconds off the clock. I believe, uh, Bob, if I were a football coach, I would never, ever throw a ball like that across the field. Well, you got to have a lot. You don't do that with a redshirt freshman or a redshirt sophomore. You do that with a fifth-year senior that's one of the uh, best players in the country that you have so. confidence in. It's too easy to pick that thing off. Lions are up, they're going for it. Ten of them up there, but Snyder gets it out. McDuffie fields it back up the 11. One man missed him, and the third man gets him. And so with 1.38 to play, no timeout remaining, a penalty flag is thrown across the way. I think we saw a little yellow fly in the melee on the sidelines. Toretta today, 11 of 31 for 81 yards. Penn State's going to have a minute and 38 seconds, and all they need is a field goal to tie. Dead ball, personal foul, and it's against Penn State. Oh, my goodness. That's going to back them up. They're on a, inside the, they will be half the distance to the goal line, so it'll be back about the 10-yard line. Oh, dear. That whittles away their chances even more. It'll also be first and 20 because it's a dead ball foul. This is the same situation that Miami defense was in last week. They were on the field at the end of the game against Florida State with a three-point cushion. I think the offense better pick up the tab for the dinner at the end of the season. The hurricane offense. Yes. Uh -huh. The defense is bailing them out. That's right. Go second. Passes away underneath. Anderson has it. And Rich is thrown out of bounds. Short of the 20. Put it on the 18-yard line. A minute and 33 seconds to play in the game. 17-14 Miami. They have no timeouts to work with now. Remember that. So virtually everything has to go to the sideline. Or if they make a first down, obviously, the, the clock does stop for, for change. That pass is caught by uh, Troy Drayton, and uh, he backs out of bounds at about the 20. Not a good play, though, Keith. They gained only three or four yards. He didn't want to throw the ball there. A lot of people get upset by saying, why throw that pass there? He was looking downfield to throw it on a square end or something deeper, but with all the defenders back deep, you got to come off and dump it off to the short guy, hopefully, hopefully, hoping that he'll catch the ball and run up field with it. Ball is just short of the 20. Third down and nine. Now they get a little pressure on him. Friendly flag is thrown. Pass is complete for the first down. But I bet you you got a holding call coming up back there around where the quarterback was. Yep. Pretty clear holding. So that will back them up again. They had their first down. Yes, they did. But penalties, the, uh, penalties have been getting to Penn State today rather yep. than to the Hurricanes. Right. Malinowski is trying to protect his quarterback and in the process is uh, got his arms outside the frame and there he is holding. Saka makes a nice move to slide around in the pocket. That was big Warren Sapp playing in relief of Mark Caesar too that forced that call. Uh-huh. That's point of foul, plus half the distance. So that puts the ball back on the four-yard line, where it is third down and 25. A minute and 15. The clock is now running. Out of the end zone. Saka gets it off. It's intercepted. Picked off by Paul White. White's taken down by Rich Anderson. And uh, Miami owns the football with a minute and four seconds to play at the Penn State 27-yard line. 
And I'll go back to what I said at the beginning of the day. Let's bronze them and put them on the shelf. <laughs> Somehow, is, some way, they always seem to find a way to win. It is one of the remarkable things that I've seen, and I did my first college football game, I guess, back as far as 1952 on radio. And I've never seen a team play two tougher games than Miami has in these past two weeks. Florida State last week and Penn State this week. And I'm sure that Saka's playing dinged up. John's trying not to show it, but he's had ice under that jersey on that shoulder. So he took a lick somewhere today. And uh, Toretta puts his knee on the ground to start the clock ticking. And it'll take away the time, and uh, they'll do it again in a moment or so. You know, Keith, when Erickson came to, came to the university, uh, he, he said there, there's something that exists between the former players and the current players. It's, uh, some unshakable bond, which is the heart of what Erickson calls the UM mystique. And, and the, the players that go on are very involved with the program. They do stay in touch with these players, and they just seem to carry it on. But I would also hasten to tell you that if Penn State is on your alma mater schedule in the future, don't get confident. Yeah. But this is a very good football team, and the test and pressure they were exposed to today will only make them better. And this one is going to end with the final score. The Miami Hurricanes, 17, and Penn State, 14. The Canes continue their win streak. It is now at 23. Penn State has its win streak broken at 11. And uh, the last people to beat Penn State prior to today was Miami. Uh, so here are the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Michael Barrow, the middle linebacker, 13 tackles for Miami. And for Penn State, Rich Anderson, 27 carries, 116 yards, and a touchdown. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for academic achievements and to help those who need some help. Now, Jack Ruth with the winning coach, Dennis Erickson. Well, Coach, congratulations, first of all, but finally it looks like we've got a ground game of sorts. Yeah, we ran the football better, and uh, we played better offensively, but defensively, of course, was a, was a key to the game, and... Uh, Penn State's a great football team. To come up here and beat him is a tremendous accomplishment after last week uh, playing Florida State. I don't think any football team can do that. You had said or were quoted in some of the papers that after this game, if you were victorious, that you'd begin to lobby for number one. Well, I'd be surprised. I mean, all you can do is watch us the last two weeks. I'm not going to lobby for anything, but this is a football team that's played their heart out the last two weeks been through a lot of things and for them to come up here and win is amazing to me it's been a season of adversity for you first with the loss of two of your former players then hurricane andrew and you guys just seem to always rise to the occasion what is the spirit to this team oh they just believe in themselves in the program and all the guys that played here uh, before the shane curry's the jerome browns the guys that have been very special to our program and i just want to say penn state's got a class program and they played really really well and we were fortunate to win a three-point victory last week, another three-point victory this week against two very tough teams. Should the University of Miami Hurricanes be ranked number one come tomorrow? Well, I'm going to vote for us. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter a whit whether they're number one tomorrow or not. What matters is whether they're number one January the 2nd. All this hoop to do and yakety yak over uh, who's number one right now it really doesn't mean a dead gum thing january 2nd is when it counts that uh, arkansas tennessee game the big ball game down to the southeastern conference uh, tennessee 24 arkansas 16 they're now in the fourth quarter the executive producer of abc sports is jack o'hara coordinating producer of abc's college football bob goodrich who also produced today's game Directed by Larry Cam, our technical director, Gary Larkins, associate producer for college football, Jim Ressler, associate director, Patrick McManus. football coming up check your local listing for the game in the area and there are some big ones including Oklahoma Texas and the Clemson Virginia Michigan Michigan State and California Washington and here is the game that decided things 
This was pressure by Armstead on Saka, the Penn State quarterback. Aaron Krein intercepts it for Miami. He takes it into the end zone for the touchdown, and we wound up with a final score of Miami 17 and Penn State 14. This is Keith Jackson for Bob Greasy and for Jack Aroop, and it's been a great pleasure to come back to Happy Valley in the heart of Pennsylvania. If you're traveling, be careful.